Nigeria's Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Ibe Kachiku, has previously said that Nigeria needs about $2.5 billion to make its four refineries function at 90 and 95% capacity. He had also made it known that the government is considering the best investment options for their facilities in a bid to address the growing petroleum product subsidy that ran into 10 trillion naira between 2006 and 2018 alone. Mr. Ibe Kachiko joins us now on the news to speak more about the successes and challenges recorded in the sector during his tenure. It's good to have you join us at this time, uh, Honorable Minister. Let's look back at these uh, past uh, four years and how it's been. Let's talk about the refineries. Uh, while some were of the opinion that these refineries should be sold because they require so much money to function optimally, some others believe that these refineries should rather be up and running. What is your take on this? Well, well I think um, very many sides have very many views on this. The, the reality is, is that, and I'm, I'm echoing here, so it's a bit of a problem, but the reality is that um, at the end of the day, these refineries, are, these refineries are assets. We can raise the requisite funding that is required to fix them and then put them in a state where uh, even if you decide we're going to sell at a later date, you will have valuable assets that can actually be valued on an international basis. Right now, they're almost in a scrap mode. Uh, they're, not, uh, they're not functioning optimally. Uh, no investors are going to put in money uh, to buy assets that are almost discrepant unless the prices are very low. You know, um, I hope you can hear me. There's a lot of echo here. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can hear you very much clearly. All right, from that, let's talk about the issue of subsidy now. Uh, this is one matter that gets Nigerians and non-Nigerians alike uh, uh, to be talking. Uh, subsidy payment uh, run up to about 10 trillion naira, and that's a huge sum, um, even higher than the nation's budget. How were you able to manage the issue of subsidy this past tenure? Well, well the, the, the first time that we started in 2015, like you know, His Excellency the President, President Muhammad Buhari, uh, authorized us to, to deal with the issue of subsidy. We did. Uh, we eliminated subsidy at the time. We saved over a trillion uh, naira in savings. And then, of course, the, the yo yo behavior of price of oil, oil you know, just uh, intervened, and, and suddenly you saw prices move from about 30 dollars to an average of about 70 80 dollars and once prices go up the net effect of course is the prices of uh, refined petroleum products go up and then it has an impact uh, in terms of uh, subsidy what we've tried to do in the first year was obviously to eliminate that subsidy so everybody understands that subsidy has its own negative economic impact no doubt about that it's money you could use for development it's money you could use to uh, fuel the budget uh, it, 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 it has its impact in terms of investment because people will not easily invest in a subsidized environment. But, but at the end of the day, this president uh, ran on the basis of uh, commonality, on the basis of the, um, uh, the popularity that he has amongst the poor, and he's perpetually always worried about the impact of moving subsidy when we have not finished repairing our refineries. And I think that what we're going to do over the next uh, few years, I would imagine the government will focus on trying to get those refineries working. Then they have to provide enough justification for then addressing fully uh, the subsidy thing. The other second thing to do is to manage the subsidy well in such a way that the volume of consumption is reduced. Um, at a critical time in 2016, 2017, we had managed to reduce that substantially. Obviously, it, moves, it, it, it went up again. Uh, as you know, subsidy and, and the issue of refineries is really as an NMPC bid. That is managed by NMPC and, and, and its management. Uh, our job is basically an oversight and policy regulation and trying to do guidance on this. But I think we obviously need to go back to the drawing board that we had in 2016 and begin to whittle down on those numbers. Uh, there's nothing wrong with subsidy as a concept. Every part of the world uh, gives subsidy. Uh, I don't know, Trump yesterday announced 16 billion to farmers because of the effect of the, the, the Chinese uh, uh, trade warfare. So, so the, the reality is every country looks for a way to support, to support uh, its system. So subsidy is not what the problem is. It's how the subsidy is run and whether the country can afford, uh, given its precarious economic situation, uh, the subsidy at this point in time. So first, let's go deal with the numbers. We told down those numbers so that they're realistic in terms of consumption. So we start subsidizing our neighboring countries. Maybe when we do that, it will no longer be, quite frankly, an emotive issue. 
And then secondly, let us deal with infrastructure in terms of refineries. Right. Once we do that, we can then have a basis to then address the issue of subsidy. All right. So is this an admission now that the government is actually paying subsidy on petroleum products? I'm not, I'm not admitting anything. My point is we use the word on the recovery. There's a difference between subsidy and the recovery, and I've tried to explain this many times. Subsidy is when you overtly, legally come up with a concept to pay money uh, for, uh, for um, to exporters on a global basis, sorry, to importers on a global basis for... Uh, bringing products uh, at prices that are quite frankly higher than local sale prices. On the recovery is when NMPC, which is what is happening, decides that as a business model, it's going to be the sole importer bringing the product and hopefully consume some of the subsidy elements within its P&L. It is possible that other areas of operation will help him cover some part of that support, as it were. So there are two different issues altogether. All right, let's now talk about the days ahead. What are your expectations for whoever will be stepping into your shoes in this new dispensation? Oh, there are lots of, lots of things to be done. The refinery you've mentioned is key. Um, the subsidy issue will still be addressed in terms of management. Uh, production needs to go up because one, one nice way uh, to deal with this subsidy and some of these overhangs is to obviously produce more and use the income in that to try and, to try and uh, support some of these. Uh, the flare that we've started needs to be completed so that we exit gas flare. Uh, gas is key. We need to create a twin parallel earning capacity for the country, and gas provides that, that vehicle. Uh, infrastructural deficit in the sector is high. Uh, our pipelines are old, some 40, 50 years, just like the refineries. We need to begin to address them. Uh, legislation is key. We need to finish up all the work on PIGB and all the component laws. So there isn't a, a scarcity of work to be done. Right then, the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources in Nigeria, Dr. Ibe Kachiku there. Thank you very much for speaking to us at this time and I wish you all the best in your future endeavors.